You are listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Blyso, and my regular weekly guests. And we are all here to share the research, the science, and the strategies, as well as some of the fun, to help you to create a more active life. Welcome to this week's episode of Creating Active Lives and slightly different one this time. So this is definitely one for all you dog owners out there. I'm really, really pleased to welcome Emily Thomas, who's a lifelong dog owner. But in 2009, she took up the sports of canicross and bike yore. And don't worry, we're going to explain what those are as a way of keeping both herself and her rescue dogs fit, healthy and sane. And once she discovered the benefits of these sports for both the body and the mind and the dogs, she kind of she got really, she got hooked to the point where now her purpose in life is to actually get more people involved in this. So this is something as a dog owner myself, I'm really interested in because I think once you've got used to all the walks in your area, there comes a point where you want to do something a little bit different. So it's knowing what is different. So Emily, tell us a little bit more. First off, what is Canicross? So Canny Cross is essentially cross-country running with your dog. But unlike um, ordinary sort of just going out for a run with your dog maybe off lead, Canny Cross is where they are actually attached to you. So you wear a belt um, and your dog wears a specific uh, harness, which is designed for them to pull into. And then you're attached to your dog um, via a bungee lead, which absorbs a lot of the shock of them pulling if they do pull Um, but but the idea is overall is that they are going to help you you're going to get some assistance with your running with your dog attached to you so the idea is they are pulling you oh that sounds really interesting and I'm guessing bike your has something to do with bike yes so the added element of the bike is um is obviously one that I would suggest to people once they've done all their voice training um and and taught their dog all the cues but yes what we generally recommend is an attachment that goes on the front of the bike um which keeps uh, a bungee line away from the wheel if it sort of drops down but again the idea is is that your dog is out in front of you and they are pulling as well um, but obviously with the bike we tend to be able to keep up with them a little bit better because you can go a bit faster on a bike so it's it's kind of not so much horsepower as dog power on the Absolutely bike dog so power. <laughs> anyone who's thinking about getting an electric bike maybe they should just get a dog instead and do it but it sounds really interesting and I will just just a little word of um, warning for anyone out there. We've both got dogs and we've both got dogs that obviously if somebody comes to the door or whatever might start barking. But that's all part of the podcast. They're, they're giving you their advice. So um, in dog language. So how did you how did you get involved in this? So it all started off for me um, with my rescue dog. She was a husky collie cross. And I didn't really understand at that point when I took her on what I was taking on. Um, And she suffered really badly with separation anxiety. So whenever I went out to work um, and my I left my house, um, I'd come back to this trail of destruction. um, And she she would just go through uh, my house and destroy um, anything that she could find. Um, There we go. There's the dogs. Uh, There we go. Thank you. (laughs) And I started to look for a way that it was going to um, it, w- it was going to help calm her down so that she had what she needed before I left the house in the morning. So I tried a variety of different activities with her, um, but she was also quite reactive with other dogs. Um, so <laughs> I tell everybody this because we got kicked out of agility classes. We got kicked out of dog oh, no. training. We got kicked out of fly ball, which is all, you know, really good activities that you can do with your dog, but it wasn't for her. Um, and somebody said to me, why don't you try running? And I said, oh, no, I'm not a runner. I really, you know, I'm not built for running. I don't want to do that. Um, and they were like, honestly, if you run with your dog, um, it, it takes a lot of their energy out. They have to focus because they're responding to voice cues that you give them. Um, and it will be really good for you two to build a bond. So I was like, OK, all right, then I'll give it a go. Um, and I could see the difference almost instantly when I went out um, running with her 
because she had to focus on me as well as the physical exercise, when I left her during the day then, my house wasn't being destroyed. And so I was like, oh, this is amazing. I finally found something that will help. But also within that first sort of, um, I think it was about four months that I started running with her, I was actually pretty overweight um, and I lost three stone. So I was like, Wow, you know this is this is definitely the way forward for me. I've got to, I've I've got to keep this up, um, and it, it's just grown from there. I've now got four dogs. Um, unfortunately, she's no longer with us, um, but yeah, I've 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 definitely committed myself to this as a a, a new, um, well, not new anymore, but a, a lifestyle. Amazing, and it was so as a non-runner, was it? Was it easy to start running with the dog or was it something that or was it easier than you expected it to be? Much easier than I expected it to be because um, I had that motivation to go out because I could see that it made such a difference to her. And also I could see that we were building a better bond with each other. You know, she was listening to me more um, and, and we were getting that sort of connection, which is guess what every pet owner wants with their with their their pet they they want to have that relationship with them and I could see that so it wasn't difficult to get out of the door in the morning because I was like you know this is this is fun we're having a great time even when the weather was awful we'd come back and um, you know you you get all the high after you've been out and done exercise so I was getting all of that and uh, yeah it just it, it it made everything a lot more easy for me to actually be motivated to do it so this might seem like a a very basic question but you can't just like slap a collar or a harness on your dog and run with a standard kit no um the reason being is is that um dogs have got a lot of nerves um and and a lot of important uh, muscular structure in their neck um and so if you just go out with a handheld lead onto their collar you do risk doing them some um injury and i'm also now a uh, because I have devoted my life to all these dogs, a qualified canine hydrotherapist. Um, And we learn a lot about um, anatomy and physiology. And um, it's really important that you have the the correct kit on your dog so that they they don't get injured, basically. But also for yourself, because, you know, if if you're running along um, and your dog sees something, which inevitably they will at some point that interests them, or even if they just stop for a sniff, if you're holding on to a lead, that's going to affect your upper body. You're going to get, um, you know, strains and sprains on your neck, your back, your shoulder. So having it all set up so that, um, you know, you take the force of that pull on the widest and most stable point of your body, which is your hips, basically. Um, right. you're, you're protecting yourself as well as your dog. So that's why it's important to get the right kit. Is the kit expensive? Because I know there'll be people out there that might be interested but might be put off by the cost. Is it expensive? Um, I would say, relatively speaking, not. Um, If you think about if if you're going out and buying a pair of decent running trainers, that's going to cost you about £100 and they're probably going to last you a couple of years at the most. You're going to spend around about £100 on a starter kit for everything you know your belt your line and your harness unless you go for the more expensive racier um, stuff um, but that uh, kit will then or should last you the the lifetime of your dog so um, you get a lot more value out of it than um, than people might expect um, and also there's quite a good uh, if you if you take it up and decide it's not for you um, there's quite a good resale um, like second hand oh, right. resale market for it as well cool so you mentioned that you weren't a runner so you don't have to be a runner already necessarily to start this no absolutely not um what we sort of say to people is um a couch to 5k uh is a really good place to start um because it will build up you and your dog at the same time um and you know it's proven to sort of help people get into it people stick with it if if they're following a program um so so you know your basic nhs couch to 5k is a really good way to start county cross right so one thing that I know would worry me and possibly might worry other people is the risk of being pulled over. Is that is that 
a real risk or is it just kind of a, a worry? I think it, it is always going to be a worry. Um, but if you have got the the equipment and like I say, you've got everything in the right place. So you've got your your belt at your widest point, which is, is your hips. Um, it's going to be quite hard for your dog to actually pull you over um, because you're going to be balanced. You've got your hands free. Um, and so there's always going to be a risk of, of tripping, but that would be the same if you were just running on your own, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, there is this fear about being pulled over, but actually it's also the reason why we train voice cues. So what I say to people is you're actually going to, if you do it properly, uh, train your dog to pull. And then you are also going to have cues that you can use to, to slow your dog down and to stop your dog. So that if there's something, um, you know, that you come across that's a hazard, you've got the ability to slow your dog down as well so that you feel safe. It, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I know um, I've got a, I've got a small dog and we'll come on to sort of dog size in a moment, but my, um, my son and, daughter-in-law have a big dog and whenever I take her out for a walk she's she's very much a stop and sniff very much a stop and sniff and it's being a big dog it's sometimes quite hard to get her going again but I know that my daughter-in-law Erica if you're listening hi she says that when she's got the belt on and takes her out running she actually tends to not stop and sniff that much so actually there's probably less risk almost of, of falling than with a normal dog who might suddenly stop for a sniff um, and sort of throw you off balance a bit yeah absolutely and I mean the idea of canny cross is is that you're you're giving the the dog a job to do as well and so once they learn that actually you know this is what we're doing and we're working together we're doing something together um they they will t- most dogs will will sort of catch on to that very quickly take it quite seriously um and they'll get really focused when they're running as well so so they're again less of a danger of them stopping to sniff because they you know that's for perhaps another time when you're doing a different kind of walk but you know they understand that when they're running with you that that's their job that's what they're doing with you and so they they get into the into the groove of it so to speak so the the benefits then of this you've mentioned that you've lost three stone which is I mean an amazing achievement because we all know anyone who's out there knows that weight loss isn't necessarily as easy as we anticipate it's going to be so obviously weight loss has been a big benefit for you I mean I I can't see you fully so um, I can't really tell but what other benefits have you noticed about doing this for you we'll come on to the dogs in a moment but what are the benefits for you that you've noticed I think there's always going to be um an element of if if you're taking your dog out canny crossing we tend to run on trails so you go to places which are you know open that you're out in nature um i have to say that it's it's highly beneficial for mental health and you know when we were when we were all locked down in the pandemic um and and people really discovered that that they needed that space and that time outside to to uh, sort of process everything um a lot more people actually took up Canny Cross as well and have stuck with it. And I think it's it's that benefit from, from being outside and getting the fresh air, getting that time and that space away from, uh, you know, the your daily life to, to go and just do something, um, do something active and just share it with, you know, you, your dog. It's, it's a really good um, way to de-stress um, but also, obviously, keeping moving is is really important, especially as you get older um, in life. And <laughs> you'd probably be quite surprised to know that most of the, the the people that are sort of doing canny cross are actually older women. Um, yeah, really? um, you sort of, you know, forties, fifties, even sixties. Um, uh, people are, are, are sort of getting involved with with canny crossing with their dog as a way to keep themselves motivated um and obviously you've got all the health benefits of of you know doing cardiovascular exercise um and also there's an element of sort of impact with the dog as well so particularly for women you know our bones and things it's it's just really good for us to be honest so um i think i i've definitely 
I've changed the way that I was, you know, I wasn't particularly active. I didn't have any real hobbies as such. And, um, you know, having the dogs and then getting into Candy Cross has meant that I now spend, you know, my weekends out at events in different places all over the country and, and enjoy seeing different parts of, of the country and all that brings with different elements of nature, etc. And it's um, nat- oh, nature is a huge thing with me. I'm all about being outside. And it, guys, anyone who's listening, if you go back to episode 11 as well, we talk about the power of nature and actually what's happening in our bodies when we're out in nature. And it is such an important thing, isn't it? So I'm guessing that being out in nature is also beneficial for the dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, dogs, dogs are sort of... Um, you know from way back when a dog would would cover a lot of ground when when they were they were wild and and we know that wolves cover a lot of ground um and Mm. you know sometimes I think that that our pet dogs don't always get that sort of broad experience that um that their ancestors would have had and I'm not saying you know they need to go and roam on the plains or anything like that but um the excitement that you see in dogs when they go somewhere different and they get to smell different smells and they see different things it's all really enriching for the dog as well so even that sort of preparing so before you actually go for your run where you know you might get them out of the car somewhere different and you let them have a sniff you let them go to the toilet um let them you know do doggy things that that's all really good for a dog as well um and and gives them something different uh, than you know your sort of average walk you know you mentioned all knowing all the the local walks around you will yeah. you tend to to look for different places when you start doing canny cross and look for different routes and get a bit more adventurous so that's definitely a benefit to to the dogs as well and it's i mentioned that i've got a small dog she's sort of small jack russell size does surely a big dog would be more of a benefit doing this or or a small dog's just as much small fun. dogs are just as capable of um canny crossing um f- so for example um most of the races that we do um and there are races you can compete in canny cross as well um most of the races are around 5k so there are so many dogs that can do the 5k races but then you will get um you will get sort of human trail running races which allow canny crossers and you can go up to ultra marathons with your dog. And I know somebody who is is local to me who runs with a border terrier, and he he frequently does ultra marathons with his border terrier. People wow. are like, you know, how does she keep up with you with her little legs? And um, he said, you know, you just have to you have to train it um, so that they're built up in the same way that you would train yourself up for that distance. Um, and as long as you're careful and you keep an eye on your dog and, you know, they're getting a decent diet and you make sure they don't start losing weight or anything like that, then, um, you know, they're perfectly capable of, of covering longer distances, even if they are a smaller breed. So somebody who wants to get started with this, and I, I do think it's something my, my dog, I think, would love the sort of focus and it would probably do an awful lot of good as well. Uh, is, is it something you can kind of just start on your own or is it best to go to a trainer or a club to get the 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 right information on how to get started so there there's loads of information out there online as there is with everything um about how to get started um and you you can just start out on your own that that is how I started um all that all that time ago because I was worried about taking my dog with other dogs um, with her reactivity Um, but obviously there are there are barriers with that in that if you do come across a problem or something that you know you're not quite sure of you haven't got anybody to ask about Um, so there's plenty of information out there and you know I I myself do do courses so that people can get started on their own um, if that's what they prefer but then you've got the option of social canny cross groups. Um, K 
can be a really good way to get started because actually dogs will learn off other dogs as well. So if you're struggling with with the cues and, and your dog's not quite understanding and you're miscommunicating things, having other people there with their dogs, um, you know, nine times out of 10, if you take your dog along to a group run and everybody starts off and sets off running, your dog will just go, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. And they will just automatically take up that line and start pulling so social um social groups are can be a really good way to to get started and also to give you that bit of extra support to get out there you know if you arrange to meet up with a group you're more likely to do it um and then you've got uh dedicated canny cross coaches now who are a bit like pts um for, for people and dogs and they can coach you through all the cues give you specialist advice and tips on you know how to how to motivate your dog if your dog's not necessarily motivated by the usual things um and also give you a lot more structure to the session so that you, you know you're you're progressing in a, a logical way which um you know group group runs tend to be you know social but they might not have the same sort of structure that uh, a dedicated canny cross course or coach would give you so um those are those are the main ways to get started so start with some individual tuition or coaching initially and then move into the social ones once the dog's kind of got the hang- and you've got the hang of yeah, it yeah if, if, you're, if well. you're worried or um you know joining a group uh, a lot of the canny cross coaches do a group uh, couch to 5k um, which is is just a brilliant way to get started because you're all learning together then um, and any sort of uh, stumbling blocks that are dealt with within a group situation so you don't feel like you're on your own and um, yeah it can be a really good way to to get you started and keep you going in the sport. So you can actually start with walking yes yeah absolutely. and just walk jog walk jog like with a, a traditional couch to 5k just start start with the basics you're not you don't have to go straight into running. No. Um, you build up gradually. No, and a lot of people, particularly uh, this time of year, because we're in the summer um, and it's quite warm, so it's not ideal for running uh, dogs at all um, at this mm. this point in time. Um, so people are uh, organising canny hikes. Um, and, it, you oh, know, right. it's just a, a name that's been given to, to sort of specific walking with dogs so that you've got, uh, you know, your belt, your line, your kit, um, and you're you're going out walking with your dog rather than running um, so that, uh, you know, it's, it's less impact. But you can still train all your voice cues. You can still do all your, um, you know, all your bits and pieces to, to get yourself ready for canny crossing, but obviously at a lower speed so that, um, you know, if you're unfit and you haven't done any exercise before or your dog is unfit and hasn't done any exercise before, then it's a really great way to get started. Yes, because dogs, particularly if they're lead walked most of the time, won't necessarily um, be runners no. yet, if you like. No. I mean, they, the instinct's there, but not the, the fitness and things. So people out there might be thinking, oh, you know, all that running and stuff, I'm not really keen on that. But I quite like the idea of taking the dog along with the bike. So tell me a little bit about bike your. So obviously uh, a lot faster. Um, and uh, I would, I would just be cautious of the fact that obviously it is going to be more risky in terms of you know what can happen to you if your dog does suddenly stop if you're on a bike um it's yes. you know that there's more damage that can be done um so what i generally say to people is if you want to bike with your dog you really need to have trained your voice cues first so that you're happy uh that your dog is going to be in front of you um and that you can slow them down if you need to um, but I started bike drawing because um, one of my dogs is basically just he's got a, a screw loose. He's a Springer Spaniel cross collie um, and the the canny cross wasn't fast enough for him. He he would turn around and look at me and uh, he, he would be like, you're not going fast enough for me. I want to do more. Um, and so I decided to, to try the biking and, I you know, I hadn't been on a bike since I was a kid. Um, but decent mountain bike so you want something that's got um a bit of suspension usually in in the front um you don't really want a a road bike for for attaching a dog to with with sort of thin little tires you want you want a proper mountain bike 
um, and then attaching what we call a bike drawer attachment, which is just um, something which goes onto the handlebars or the headset of your bike. Um, and you run a bungee lead down the length of it to keep it away from dropping into the wheel if your dog does drop back. Yeah. Um, and then, you, you know, you train, you, you've trained your dog to pull out in front. Um, so you can issue your voice cues, off you go. Um, but the other thing you do have to be careful about with bike drawing is that um, you have to be a little bit more aware of where you can bike draw because um, <laughs> it dates back to some really old uh, law about dogs in draft on the road and you're not oh, yeah, really? you're not supposed to bike um, dogs in harness on, on any kind of a road, even a country lane or anything like that. Um, I doubt. Gosh. I doubt very much you'd get stopped by the police and and get told that um, you, you know you're you're breaking the law. But uh, it's it's also not great for dogs' joints to be to be going fast on hard surfaces. So no. you want to choose trails where um, you know it's going to be nice and soft for the dog. Um, you you'd also don't want to be um, somewhere where there's lots of people where you, you're going to be coming across lots of people at a higher speed. Um, because I can tell you now, even with my Springer Spaniel Collie Cross, we've clocked speeds of up to 30 miles an hour when we've been bike touring. Goodness me. Yeah. Gosh, that's a speedy yeah. dog. Um, you know, that's downhill, um, but but we could... Even we so. can definitely we can definitely get up to speeds of 30 miles an hour um and some of the bigger dogs which are sort of purpose bred for the sport um because it is is getting to the point where people are purpose breeding dogs specifically for it um you know they can hit sort of um up to to 38 miles 40 miles an hour it's wow. incredible so you just want to be a little bit more aware if you're on a bike that um people might not appreciate being sort of sped up upon with with um that happening um much in 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 the way that you would with you know a normal bike but um people take more offense to it if if a dog's attached um and you know you just need to be a little bit more aware of where you go so maybe start with the canny cross always or the canny high start yeah initially progress but it is I, I just love, I love the idea, like for anyone, and we know that there's so many more dog owners out there now since since lockdown and all sorts, since we were um, going through everything. There's so many more people with dogs. And I think there's a lot of people, you know, who do want to include their dogs in their fitness, who do want to do something with their dog, but aren't quite sure what. And this sounds just like really, really ideal for for both dog and dog owner, because you're doing something fun presumably the dogs love it they must get a lot of mental stimulation from it but also it it ties them out appropriately which is which is what we want for our dogs we want to give them the right amount of exercise physically and mentally because dogs need that mental stimulation don't they Absolutely, it's not just yeah. go and run with a dog it is we forget and this is where you know sniffing walks are so good because that's that mental stimulation but this is kind of got different elements and like you say being able to go out onto different trails and different areas and new experiences for them sounds really really exciting it i mean it really does sound like something that i think a lot of people will do and i know i've mentioned the topic to a few people and they've said oh yeah i've heard about that um but a lot of them haven't tried it yet so hopefully this will get people really thinking about getting out there and giving it a go so if somebody wanted to know more about it obviously you're here so you'd be a great place to start where can people find you and what services do you offer so my my website is uh canine trail time so the letter k the the number nine and then trail time um so people can find um lots of information on my website i've obviously got all the kit for sale on the website as well um but i have started doing a lot more in terms of education uh, since lockdown and um i've got a lot of courses on there so that people can learn i've got a lot of free resources on there so that people can learn and get started um but i also um set up a, a canny cross coaching business in uh, 2021 
and are now teach people to teach. So we've now got a network of Canny Cross coaches over the UK as well who run uh, courses, classes, one to ones that can help people get started um, canny crossing as well. And these are all highly experienced people that have been you know, canny crossing for years. So don't just know um, about how to canny cross, but have, have got sort of a, a wider range of knowledge about, you know, dog welfare. And a lot of them have sort of got, um, you know, yeah, coaching qualifications with England athletics, UK athletics, that kind of thing as mm. well. Um, yeah. So really committed to, to giving people a, a good experience when they start out. So, um, yeah, that that's a canny cross coach as well. Excellent. And I'm I'm guessing, well, I'm an assumption here, but I'm assuming that buying kit from someone like you through someone like you is going to be a little bit better than, say, going to one of the online shopping centre sites where you're just picking something at random, whereas you can give much more advice and you know that the products you're selling are fit for purpose yeah I get a lot of people that come to me because they've bought on one of the bigger um, online sites just to give it a go and I totally understand that you know if you're not sure what you know whether you're going to carry it on or not um, you just buy something cheap online um, but dogs are all so individual and you know, it's, it, I've I've spent the last eleven years learning about all the different dogs, the way they move, the way that the harness affects the way they move. Um, and so, if somebody comes to me and says, you know, tell me what best harness uh, to get for my dog, I have a number of questions that I have to ask first. Um, yeah. And people say, oh, it's so complicated, isn't it? And it, it's it's not complicated as such, but you want to get the right thing. And I think you don't want to end up wasting money on something that isn't suitable. So it's always worth speaking to somebody who knows about the kit so that you get that tailored advice for your dog and for you. Because to be honest, you know, the, the different belts that you can get don't always suit um you know different people you have to have a little bit of um individual input into into which belt to get as well so all things like that mean that it is better to go to a specialist retailer and I, I only say that because so many people have come to me where they've you know wasted money on stuff that isn't right for them so yeah um, you know buy, buy cheap buy twice is definitely the case with canning I was just going to say the same thing yeah. yeah but it's like with running shoes isn't it you know you 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 don't just pluck a pair of running shoes off an online site unless you happen to know that that particular brand size style already suits you you want something that you can that you know is is best particularly and for the type of running you do as well um, um i'm looking into climbing a mountain and the the number of different shoes people say oh you want these for this and then you want approach shoes for that and then you want those type of shoes for that um but it's it's but it's going to somebody who actually knows the questions to ask as you say and, and this is where yeah. you know the clubs and the coaches come in because they often have kit bags so you can actually try out different kit um when you're starting out before you buy anything which is really valuable because um having the opportunity to try something on you and your dog and seeing it work means that you're confident yeah. about buying it then so that that's another reason to to sort of go to a group or a coach to to get a bit of help to get started so um, I'm going to put, I'll put all the links when the episode goes out. I'll, all the links will be there. But people can find you pretty much on social media at K9 Trail yes. Time. Um, and is there anything you would say just as a, a really key piece of advice to somebody who's thinking about doing this? I would say get to know and, and, and people are always a bit like, why? Why this? But get to know your dog's normal before you start because then you can sort of see if there are any changes that are happening when you start um because with any exercise routine and you know your doctor would tell you this um that you know if if anything changes with you and you start to feel uncomfortable or you know there are things going on that um you know might cause a problem it's the same with dogs if if you know how your dog normally acts and how your not dog normally is before you start um, canny crossing then you can monitor them to, to make sure that it's right for you and your dog um, I would say that you know 99.9% of people that get started only see positive changes in their dog um, when they start doing right. it you know dogs lose weight and their behavior gets better um, and and all this kind of thing but just to to be really aware of, of where your dog is at before you begin so that you can see any changes that are happening 
when you start the new exercise regime. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Emily. This has been really, really interesting. And it's something that I think my dog would benefit from when we get a little bit more uh, better at our voice cues. But it's definitely something she would benefit from because I think it she needs that kind of um, energy output. Um, so it'd be really, really good. But thank you so much for coming on. As I say, all the links will be available. But if you want to find out more, then just search for K9 Trail Time. Again, thank you so much for coming on. I think it's going to interest a lot of people. And you've been listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belitha, and my guest, Emily Thomas. And we will see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belitho, and my guest. Join me each week for more on how to create and sustain everyday activity and follow me online at Fitness Career Mentor or Fab Newless if you're interested in career development and more on creating active lifestyles.